Oh, hi, students. I was just playing around with one of uh, Maylie's photographs that she submitted of this kitty cat. I was just making a fun little surrealism design out of it. Um, if you're interested in learning more about how to do this post-production editing or photoshopping of your photographs, then I recommend that you sign up for image design. Image design is learning how to photograph, how, how to Photoshop your images. And you can use your own images in image design, or you can go to Google and you can find images on the Creative Commons to use to make fun and exciting designs. This class is going to be offered again in block two. So if you're interested in taking it, let your counselor know. Today I'm going to teach you to use GIMP to edit your pictures just as basic photography editing. So how to install GIMP, how to open an image in GIMP, how to crop an image in GIMP, how to adjust the brightness and contrast, how to save a GIMP.xcf file that you can go back in and edit, how to export a JPEG image, so that's the image file that you're actually going to publish, and how to optimize your image size so that it uploads quickly or transfers quickly for somebody that you want to share it with. So you want to go to your internet browser and type in GIMP.org, G-I-M-P dot O-R-G, hit enter. It will pull up the GIMP website. GIMP is a free program, so you can either click this download button here or you can click the download tab and it will bring you to the downloads page. If you have a Mac, you're going to click on OS X. I always just go here and download GIMP directly personally. So this is gonna give you the installer. So you're just gonna to go to your downloads folder and make sure that you save that GIMP installer to your downloads. And then wherever it is that your downloads saves to, you wanna find that file once it's completely saved. And as you can see, it's taking a moment. Okay, so mine's finally saved. You wanna open up and run that installation, okay? So you haven't actually installed GIMP at that point. Now, if you have a school computer, it's gonna pop up a screen that asks if you wanna give this program permission to make changes to your computer. You need to click yes. All right, so pick your language, English, and then the install dialog box pops up. You're going to click install and then just click next, next, and then after it's finished installing, click finish. Make sure you've clicked finish. If you don't, it won't finish the install. I've already got it installed, so I'm going to just go ahead and open up GIMP. And how I do that on my computer is I just go to my little search and I go GIMP and there it is and I click on it and it opens right up for me. So here we are back at my fun image I was playing around with. The first thing I want to show you is how to open up an image. So you can go file open and then you just go to wherever it is that you save your images. I do mine in pictures and I have a digital folder, photo folder and I have a 1920 for the year school year 2019-2020 folder. And here I have Maylee's kitty cat image. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on it and then go open. Okay, so um, there is my cute little image and I always am looking in the layers. So over here are your tools. If you hover over them, you can see the names of the tools. Uh, we're gonna be using the crop tool today. All right, and um, if you can't find these docs, then they're under Windows. Windows, Dockable Dialogs, there's your layers. So if you're not sure where they are, just click there, you'll get them. Tool options, um, if your toolbox isn't showing up, there's your toolbox, okay? Sometimes you might accidentally click Hide Docs, ooey. Or you might not be in single window mode. Maybe all of your docs are just all over the place and it's a mess and you hate it that way. Just go to Windows, single window mode and it'll put everything back together for you again okay all right you got little scroll bars here so i always am in my uh layers and i like to make a duplicate so i'm just going to right click on the layer and go duplicate layer all right and then i'm going to double click on that i'm going to call that my original i like to save an original because sometimes i oops i'm in the wrong whoops <laughs> there i am um 
I like to save my original um, because if you start editing your your layer and you start making all these changes to it and you don't like them, you can just hide that and you have your original. So let me just imagine I took my paintbrush. Click save for a second here. Actually, we're just going to save as everyone all together. Save as. We need to name it. Okay, so this is going to be... Um, I'm going to call it B and C for brightness and contrast and crop demo, okay? And um, it's going to save into the same folder, 1920 digital photo, and it's saving it as a .xcf file. And you can't change that. So don't go in here under save and try to change that to JPEG, okay? No, no. Won't work. It's going to save it as a .xcf file because this is GIMP and it's saving it as a GIMP file. So then you're just going to click save. Okay. So the file name's up here now. And now my RAM is free, my random access memory. GIMP uses a lot of your RAM. So if it starts to not do what you think it should, just go up to file, save. I'm constantly saving. So let's say I grab my paintbrush. See, it doesn't even want to grab my paintbrush. I grab my paintbrush. Um, and you can change the colors of the paint and you can use even this little this fun little eyedropper and grab colors From your actual picture, which is fun. Um, but let's say I decide that I'm gonna paint on my picture boo, 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 boo. Okay, and I go oh I don't like what I did I can just click on the eyeball and Hide that layer see isn't that cool? That's what the eyeball does so you're actually looking from the top down through the layers. And you can see the original layer is still there. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and click right here. And when I click on that little spot, it locks the layer and I'm gonna hide it. I'm just gonna put it away, lock it up and put it away and bring this one back. Oh, I didn't like that, but that's okay. I can hit Control Z and it'll go back and you'll notice it's going back and undoing all these things that I did a second ago. Ooh, it's not wanting to go back that, oh, there. Oh, hit Control Y, okay. I went back too far. Took away my duplicate layer. All right, so I'm gonna lock it and I'm gonna hide my original and I'm just gonna click on that layer and work in that layer. The whole reason why we came here is because I wanted to show you how to crop. So I'm gonna click save and I'm going to grab this crop tool right here. If you hover your cursor over them, they tell you what their names are. Grab the crop and I'm just gonna draw by clicking and dragging, click hold drag, um, a rectangle around it. And you grab these corners here each of the corners. Now, if you don't grab the corner and you click in the middle, it crops it. Okay, you hit Control Z. So I'm gonna draw that again. But if you are clicking on those corners, um, you can move the crop box around the way you want it. And I kind of want to have my crop box set up so that it's kind of a square and um, it's leaving more space on the side where the kitty cat is looking off. So I'm kind of like seeing that kitty cat's field of vision, right? drawing my eye over to what the cat is looking at. I'm gonna click in the middle and it crops it. So boom, you learned how to crop. Now I'm gonna click save and I'm gonna go to colors. This is a color menu and there's all kinds of different fun color tools you can look at up here, all right? But um, we're gonna just go to brightness and contrast because this is the thing that I've been telling you I want you guys to work on. This is what happens when you increase your brightness, okay? Or decrease it. You get highlights or lowlights, right? Okay. But they're in between pure blacks and pure whites, okay? So I already know because I use brightness and contrast a lot that I need to beef up my brightness. Contrast, what it does is it makes your blacks blacker and your whites whiter. So watch the whites and the blacks. The whites are getting whiter, the blacks are getting blacker. Okay, pretty cool. Now I did lose some of my ocean. That's kind of a bummer. I do wanna have a little bit of the color of the ocean if I can and still have a pop, but you know, might have to, I gotta have that pop. I just gotta have it. Okay, I'm feeling the pop, I'm liking it. And I'm gonna click okay. And now I can hit Control Z to undo and see that was the picture that Maley submitted to me. And when I saw that picture, I thought, oh my gosh, that is just a gorgeous picture, but there's no contrast. 
see, you know, I get real upset when there's not enough contrast in the picture. I'm going to hit control Y and that's going to redo my changes. Okay. So there's my high contrast picture. It pops. I love it. If I put my eye on my lower layer, I can also hide the top layer. And that's another fun way that I can see the difference. Now you might not want that dramatic of a pop and you don't have to have that dramatic of a pop. I'm just trying to show you. If you wanna make something pop, that's how you do it. All right, so let's go ahead and go file, save, so that we have the final saved version, okay, of your GIMP with all your layer work and everything. And if you ever open up that GIMP file, it'll have all your layer work there. And then we're gonna go export, because remember I was telling you that if you want to be able to share this picture that you've edited in GIMP, it's no longer a JPEG, it's a GIMP file now. You have to export it. You have to take it out of GIMP. And normally the first time that you go to export an image from GIMP, it will, it will have a default of ping right here. So you can either go in and you can type in .jpg, and it has to have the dot, or you can go down here, I'll put the ping in again so you can see how it works. You can go down here to select file type and click on that little plus. And then you just scroll down until you find JPEG, it's alphabetized. And watch what happens to the extension up here when I click on that JPEG right there. Boom, it automatically changed the extension for me, okay? Now, before you click export, are you, are you following me? Don't click export yet move this over. I need to be able to see my kitty cat because we're going to do the final step now, which is to optimize your image. Remember, you want to make it small enough that it's going to transfer or share or upload or download really fast. Um, but you want it to be large enough that it has the good quality, right? So let's go ahead and click on export. And this dialog box pops up. This is your image optimization window. I know you've probably seen this before and you haven't really known what to do. You're like, I don't know, what quality should I make it? Well, what you're gonna do is you're gonna show your preview. The reason why is because when you don't have the preview shown, it doesn't show you the file size. So let's click on show preview. And now it's calculated the file size. It says right now it's at 679 kilobytes. Well, I promise you, it's still a really big file, okay? So I'm gonna just slide this up to 100%. Bam, look at that, that's 2.2 megabytes. I know that doesn't seem like a lot to you, but that is a lot. Like some people's computers are kind of slow and if you're posting on a website that has a lot of other graphics on there, it's gonna slow down the transfer speed. Have you ever gone to a website and it took forever for stuff to load? Yeah, it's because they didn't optimize their images, okay? So optimizing is really important in the real world. So notice what happens when I take this down to 86% quality. I'm at 578 kilobytes. How's the image looking? It looks great. Let's go down. Let's go down to about 50%, okay? Now it's at 312 kilobytes. How's that image looking? It's looking really good, okay? Let's keep going. Let's go down to about 25%. How's the image looking? It still looks really good. It's at 202 kilobytes. Let's keep going. I'm going to take this down to like 1% quality. Whoa, did you see how that broke up into pixels? That's crazy. There's hardly any pixels in this image. It's really low resolution, really low quality. It's only 39 kilobytes. That's too small. So let's bring it up. We can bring that up to anywhere between 250 kilobytes and 500 kilobytes, and you're still gonna have a ton of quality. I'm looking at the image right now. It looks fantastic. I'm not worried about it. I'm gonna save it at 75% quality because 433 kilobytes, that's a lot. It still looks good. It's been looking good for a long time. So I'm gonna click export. Okay, so now that I have it exported, let's go find it. So I'm gonna go down to my folders or wherever you save yours, okay? Normally when you open these up, aren't they in icon mode? Yeah, you've got your pictures in icon mode and, and there's that original one. So we're looking for the one that said BNC crop demo, okay? So that's the actual JPEG that I exported. This one right here, 
that's the GIMP file, that's the .xcf file. And if you go to view and you look at details, you can actually see the file types, okay? And it will tell you as well how large they are. So here's my original um, photo, it was 412 kilobytes. And then after I took it and put it in GIMP, it went all the way up to 8.3 megabytes, 8,000 kilobytes. A thousand kilobytes is a megabyte, so that's 8.3 megabytes, pretty much. And here is um, the, oh look it, I got it right down to about the same size that it originally was, isn't that funny, 442 kilobytes. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on that. That's my JPEG file. I'll open it up. And there it is, it's nice and sharp, great contrast. And let's go ahead and see what happens. When does it start breaking down? I'm enlarging it. I'm enlarging it. Look at that. Nice, great quality. You could make that any size you wanted on the computer screen and it would look fantastic. And it's small enough to transfer quickly. Okay, so what we do today, we learned how to install GIMP, open an image, crop an image, adjust the brightness and contrast. We learned how to save that .xcf file we learned how to export the actual JPEG image, and we learned how to optimize your file size so that it uploads and transfers quickly. Good job.